Okay. All right. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to my channel. My name is Juliet, and this is Colorful Threads. It is all embroidery all the time because um, it's what I absolutely love. It is my life's passion. It's what I'm here to do. So uh, if this is your first time uh, watching one of my videos, welcome. I have been doing commercial embroidery for 21 years, and I have been a technician and a trainer certified with Melco for 16. I think I'm going on 17 this year. Got to double check that. Um, a long time. And I know the machines inside and out. And I do tech tips as well as tutorials. And today I'm going to show you how to set up and stitch a patch onto the front of a hat. Um, so this is an example of what I'm going to be doing today because I have some products to do. I have a stack of hats. Um, so um, right now I have it just pinned in place. Because what I'm actually doing, and you can do this on a brand new hat, or I have a bunch of these hats that were mess ups, um, total problems with whatever, wrong color selection, you know, different issues. So I have a bunch of these, um, and I wanted to cover this so that I can do something with the hat instead of it going to the landfill. So I came up with a wonderful distress patch that will cover that quite nicely. And now I'm going to sew it onto the hat. So that's what I wanted to do with you. We're going to set up the file in the software together so you can see how to do it. The bonus part of this is I have the stitch file for this patch because I've actually done quite a few of these. And so it'll be easy to pull out the elements that we need. But I'm also going to show you if you're starting from scratch because maybe you ordered some patches in or you had a client bring you some patches and they want them applied to the hat. However it comes about, you'll be able to do what you need to do. Hi, do you need me? No? Okay. Hi. My, My camera guy, you have a question for me? Everything's good? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Something's going on. Um, okay. So let's think. I have all my tools still sitting over here. I think I'm going to move my tools, and I'm going to switch the camera so that we are working with the software. Um, so let me get my software turned on. And I need to get my machine turned on. Ah, the machine is on. Okay. All right. Switch to my screen. Software's open. There we go. Do I want to attend the files? Mm, no, I don't need to save whatever it was I was working on before. Okay. So I am working in Design Shop Professional, and I am in version 11 of the Design Shop. And First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my stitch file. Uh, let's see. I think it's I think it's here. I think. Let's see how well I did with organizing myself. Um, it's going to be under. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Old stuff. Nope. Oh, geez. Where did I put it? Let me see if it's in my history before I try digging around. File. Um, nope, that's all Care Bears. And that's a temp file, so that's probably not going to open. Nope. All right. We may just be making from scratch. Cause I thought for sure... That it was under clients. Nope. Yeah, I know it's here, but I don't know where in what folder it got put. Hmm. <laughs> Last year. Nope. Really old stuff. Probably not. 
This is what I get for not being organized. I thought I was. Nope. Don't even know where it went. Let's try one more spot into my patches. Maybe it got put in here. Ah, there it is. All right, so I got put in my patch outlines. So here's the two files that I actually created, um, the one for the distress hat and then um, the actual just like full patch setup. So I can show you what this file looks like. All right, so um, basically the way this file, because I did that distress edge, it doesn't have a full satin um, around it. So if I come in and hide everything, first step, which is a walk, let's see, expand this. I have a walking stitch, and then the second one, a bean or and then a single line center. What is my width here? 20 points, so it's only two millimeters wide. Um, and then I have my lettering and my design. So this is what I created to do my distress patch because I really i am just trying to kind of hold everything in place so that my stitching comes out well and doesn't shift the fabric around. Um, a normal, a normal, as I say it, patch. That's the distress, here it is. So see the difference is the normal um, patch with a clean edge has this added step of a single line center that's pretty wide, 45 with a normal density. That's to give us that nice, clean, satin, pretty edge that you're kind of used to seeing. Um, so we don't need that for this application, but um, patch. All right. So from the file that I created to make my distressed patch, I'm going to pull out all of this. I want a walk stitch. That's where it outlines the size of my design. And all I'm going to do is highlight it in a couple of different ways. You could hit, you know, I think it's control C. If you're a keyboard person, you can come up to the top of the screen and hit copy over here. You can however whatever way works for you. So we're going to copy that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm to a new file. And I'm just going to paste that in. So and that's a control Z or paste, you see I don't use keyboard shortcuts very often. Um, so we paste it in. So now I have the exact size of my patch. Now, if you didn't have the exact size of your patch, I'm going to switch to the overhead and we'll kind of talk about that just a little bit. Okay. See my, I got to do, move my tool bag out of the way. And I have a ton of patches that I've been working on. Uh, here they are. Okay, here they are. They're all in here. I had to get them. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. patches. This is the one I just off topic. Pretty cool. I just loved that tree, so I had to make it into a patch. Okay. Off topic. Now these are some patches that I'm going to stitch onto a couple of hats as well. These are um, uh, some small ones that actually have, like, have a little logo on them. But these are stuff that, you know, if you don't have a stitch file that you can take that walking stitch from, you can actually create it by measuring. All you have to do is take the piece that you're trying to apply and figure out what your measurements are. So for this one, 
I'm going to go, I kind of want to go right inside just a little bit. So I'm going to go right on the line. And my line is at 5 and 0 here. My 5 is up here, actually. There it is. There's my 5. Haha. -ha. So it looks like 5 by 2. So I'm going to go right on the inside of that black because I want to give myself enough room that I'm not trying to stitch right down the center of this line when I'm applying this to the hat because the reality is it's not going to go there. It's just it's so, so, so difficult to get it right on the line. So I'm opting to come inside of it just a bit. And I'm going to use white thread to stitch it down so that it blends in with the white. And let's create the file. So what did I say? Two inches by five inches. Okay. Switch back to the other camera screen. Okay. So I did not have this file to delete. I need a walk stitch. And I'm going to... Um, come down to my screen, and I like to use the grid. If you don't have the grid on on your screen, you can turn it on and off right up here. And I know that my grid is half inch. These darks are half an inch. So I'm just going to start in the center, and I'm going to go down two inches, because I said it was two by five, and then over five inches. One two, three, four, five, and then up back to two, and then back to the beginning. So to go back to the beginning, I'm going to press the shift and hit the enter key, and that's going to snap that start point back to the end point, not leaving a gap. So now I have a two by five grid, but I want to put it in the middle. So let's hit the center button. All right, let's make this a color that's a little bit better to see on the screen. How about lime green? No. Orange? Maybe orange? That's fine. All right. So, well, no actual size. Okay. So now I have my two by four, or five. And now what I need is to stitch this walking stitch out onto the hat so that I can see my patch later. So two ways to do that. You can take your walk normal stitch and right click on it and you can duplicate that which will give you two walk norming stitches. We'll delete that one. Or you can right click and go to operations and go to change element type and I would go straight to a bean stitch and add that. That gave us our bean stitch. Um, yeah, those are the two ways basically to do that. And then you want that second one to be a bean stitch because you want it to do more than one stitch. A walk normal stitch just has one row of stitching that goes one, two, three, four. A bean stitch, if you notice when it says bean, it says thickness of three, which means it's going to go one stitch, two stitch, three stitches, then continue one, two, three. And you can make this go all the way up to 13. But default is three, which is going to give us three stitches to hold that patch down and hold it down well. Okay. The second color or the second uh, walk bean stitch that we created needs to have a different color. In order to program the um, hold function when we get to the actual machine. Get my software open. I didn't open the software. Turn the machine on. Didn't work. Welcome to reality. There we go. All right. There it is. Okay. Yep. See, there's the patch. 
All right, so we have our walk stitch, our bean stitch, and everything is centered ready to go. I'm going to click on the really quick load design button, which is in version 11. If you don't have version 11, you're going to go file, machine, load design. Basically, all they did is they took this little icon from here and moved it so that you don't have to do this file machine thing. Either way, we'll get your design loaded. Another good thing to do is I have not named this. You see it's got this randomly randomly generated name. So I'm going to do a file. Ooh. Let's do a file save, not file save. Do you like? Yes. All right. And I'm going to put this back in the same... Where was it? It was in patch patches. Not patches. And it was in outlines. There we go. All right, I'm gonna call this hat app location. Enter. Okay, now I have it saved. And that's what it is. So if I switch over to my software, okay, the first thing I have to do is just like any other job, you're going to go green. We got our file, set our colors. All right, so the first color is going to be on this blue hat. I'm just going to do everything in white. Like I said, I'm doing white. So I'm going to do six, and then I need the machine to hold. So I'm going to use the little pause button here. And then my second color, which is going to be my bean stitch, is going to be white. Pretty simple setup. Next thing I'm going to do is go in and make sure that I have my right hoop selected. Well, that's my driver not right. That's weird. I haven't done hats since the new update. That's why. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay. I am using, of all of these fabulous hoops that you can use on your hat driver, I'm using the wide angle cap frame driver. So I'm going to select that and give it a check mark. We've reloaded. And as you can see, my design is way out of the screen. Not a big deal. You can click it on it. Ten. I'm doing some structure. Um, I really think hats very fast, and with all of the substitutions that they're doing on hats nowadays, with the backing uh, of the structured hats. Some of that plastic doesn't run very well at faster speed, so I like to start at 750 and see how it goes. I'll go faster on the next hat if it goes well. I'll go slower if it doesn't. All right, so from here, I'm going to switch over. We're done with the software, and I'm going to do the tripod camera. Hi. Okay. So I already have my hat driver selected because in previous videos I've done plenty of how to install it and get it correctly installed and all of that. I kind of skipped that and had it ready today. All right. So that should give us a good view here. Excellent. Of my hat. You know what I don't have ready though? Is I don't have scooped. Ha uh ha. -huh. So let's do quick hooping. And those of you that know and seen, I've done some great hooping videos. Well, that's too far. And you see, I'm hooping next to my kitchen because we're in the camper, and this is what tiny home living is all about. 
here's where my hat gauge goes. So, all right, we got this. I need my bits. I have my handy little basket that sits on the side of my machine. It has all my clips in it. And I have, I bought more. I just love them. All right, so I got clips. So this hat, um, there was a a mess up from like the get go, uh, and this one stitch on the side. It still has a full piece of back, so I'm just gonna. Making sure my sweatband in there go all the way in. Ooh, this thing is moving. All right, come along. Follow that seam. Can't see with these glasses. Oh, that's better. Now I can see. Tube is the one that has my cheater line on it that I showed in one of the previous videos. I'm not going to be doing this today. I'm only working on the front. Oh, there it is. It shifted. The P shifted down. All right. Measure. What am I going to use to measure? We're going to go back to my universal Orlando. All right, not as thick. And that. All right, the cool thing about upcycling like this is I don't have to be critically perfect because it is a distress patch, so I have a little bit of playroom. If I was doing a logo, I would have a ruler that had numbers on it instead of just kind of being a mark. Okay. Okay, we're hooked. Voila. Let's go. Whoa, sorry for all the wiggles. All right. So I've already um, gone in, and there's no bobbin in here because I blew everything out. I oiled everything, have my bobbin tensioned, and I am ready to go. And I actually forgot to put my cover back on. We'll slide that on here real quick. Maybe. I screwed the little screw in so tight it won't go in. I wouldn't lose it. There we go. Now my cover is in place. All right, couldn't get the hat in there. It's too tight. So I'm going to center hoop bullseye. That moves the hoop back. Now I can get in. Lock, lock. It's locked. All right. We're going to see how this goes. It's all, it's all what it all is about. Okay, so I have my seam here. So I'm kind of moving left to right. Find my line up straight. Okay, that's good. Down. That should be good. And start. Where's my presser foot? Oh, it's very high. Okay. Yep, software is good. All right, so this would be brand new hat. The next one I'm going to do will be one that actually looks like that. Can you do me a favor, please? Go to um, the truck and grab my roll of hat backing out of my training bag. I think it's the black bag with the buckram on the front, or not the buckram, but the 
for Milana on the front. All right. So I did a pause. What it's going to do now is um, I can see where I need to make sure this patch goes. So I'm going to – I'm using the wrong one. I was doing the white one. i make sure that I did correctly. And I'm going to look at my corners, about right there and about right there. And you know me, I like to tape. I want to tape that. Right here, it's easy because the the, um, the needle plate is here, so I can press real firmly. On the other side, I'm going to not be able to press quite so firmly. But I'm just going to follow this patch around, watching where my stitches are. And I don't know if this is really easy to see, but I'll try. Yeah, so I'm just kind of following the patch around, making sure. Thank you. <laughs> we needed backing um, to see that it's lined up here and it's lined up there. And again, I'm going to take me a piece of tape. And I, I like masking tape. And I'm not afraid to make sure that it covers where I'm going to stitch because it's going to rip out of the stitching very easily. And I'm just kind of scratching on the tape a little bit with light pressure to make sure it's adhered well. I don't want anything to shift or move. All right. Here we go. Our bean stitch. It's going right across there. Perfect. I guess I got the other side shifted just a little, but I gave myself play, so that shouldn't be an issue at all. This is looking good. Okay, moment of truth. I'm going to put it on here, and not really locking it in, but I can pull the tape and get my stitches. I got that tape stuck on there really good. All right, tape comes right off. My stitching is right on the inside of the black line. It's a little low hair, which doesn't surprise me. So I could take it up maybe a tad bit, but you see, it just kind of looks distorted, but it's really a rectangle, and it's just because things curve. But I like it. This looks awesome. Goodness. Yeah, that looks great. Hoop everything, and just because I'm picky, I don't want this thread. Let's get it all. My backing. You could leave the inside in here or pull it out, either way. Is so that looks very nice. Inside of our hat looks really nice. Stitch line, front of the hat. Dip a little bit, but I'm not surprised. Looks great. All right. I won't make you stick around and hang out with me all day while I continue to add patches and out. But this was our video for today and our little tutorial. Thank you for stopping by and joining me as we add a patch to a hat. So, 
have a fantastic and wonderful afternoon. Thanks for visiting. Give it a subscribe if you haven't subscribed. It really will help me out. And give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's content. And I'll see you next weekend for more tutorials. Have a great week. Talk to you later. Bye. And we're